Good afternoon again, everyone. So it looked like there was a bit of a technical issue where I thought I wasn't streaming live and I got a notification from my Google Chrome to say that I wasn't streaming to LinkedIn. And uh, after ending the broadcast, got a notification to say that I was actually live. So we are back again. I've got this week's guest from episode 62 of the Happier at Work podcast, Paul Walker. I'll do another quick intro to Paul. So we kind of describe our meeting as ships in the night where uh, I left Nielsen around the same time that Paul was taking over as the head of UK and Ireland business unit uh, after many, many years living in various different countries abroad. And our podcast uh, that came out on Friday has over 150 listens at this stage. Uh, we're talking all about vulnerability. I think it's a really, really important topic for leadership, especially at the moment. So, Paul, do you want to tell people a little bit about yourself and your background? And then we can get into talking a bit more about about the podcast itself. Sure. Thanks. Yeah, so um, we didn't meet uh, in my time at Nielsen. <laughs> so I'm, I'm now the Chief Commercial Officer for a company called Consumer Intelligence we, uh, we have clients, uh, we're an insight provider for clients in the financial services. Um, but prior to that, I, um, I worked for Nielsen for uh, 26 years, um, most likely being the uh, UK and Ireland MD. But prior to that, like you said, I'd been to lots of wonderful places such as uh, Turkey, Russia, um, Geneva, uh, Amsterdam. So a uh, long and varied career and uh, yeah, the topic um, of vulnerability really grew on me over the last few years. So it was a, it was a fun conversation to have with you, Aoife. Yeah, yeah. No, it was really, really good. And I think, I mean, it, it's a topic I think people are very curious about. And, and maybe where we start is like, how do you, where do you even begin with vulnerability? I know it's certainly something that it, probably at this stage, it's well over a year ago now where someone commented saying, you know, I was looking for suggestions for topics for the podcast and someone commented asking specifically about that and, you know, reached out to my network and no one really knew what to say or what to talk about or or felt like they were expert enough to to give an opinion on it either. So where, where so I was thinking, where do we where do we even begin? I mean, where I began was was in myself. Um, you know, I didn't. There's certainly there's certainly no commercialism in in vulnerability, and that's part of the point. For mm. for me, it was my journey um, as a manager, as a leader, as a father, as a husband, uh, because I moved. Um, so probably ten, maybe a little bit less years ago, I was prepared always, uh, and I had a degree of ambition that made me fear failure more than I should. Uh, and I've really tried to move myself to being much more curious and, and open about what might be rather than focus on the things that are sure, sure, sure fire wins. So, uh, so that's how it started for me. I think where it starts for, uh, for you or anyone else is, is, is entirely personal. And I think we, we touch mm. upon that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we talk about that, that each person is kind of their own individual journey. It's not as if that there's a framework you can present, you know, like, and here's how to be vulnerable. It's more about being yourself and being comfortable with being yourself. And and exactly going back to, to what you had shared on the podcast, it's this, you know, starting with yourself, it being a personal journey. And rather than adding stuff to the to-do list of here's things that I need to do in order to be vulnerable, it's actually taking things away. And I really resonated with your example of being prepared all the time and, you know, having having everything ready to go. Um, definitely can suffer from that sometimes myself. Um, but I mean, case in point this afternoon, technical issues, I thought that we weren't streaming, but alas, we were. And I just... You just have to roll with these things, don't you? You just have to kind of get on with it. Um, yeah. yeah, no, some really, really interesting thoughts around that, I think. And we we spoke before we went live as well about this idea of it coming from very senior leaders. And I think those 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 in senior leader positions need to almost give permission by being vulnerable themselves to other people to be a bit more human at work. 
A hundred percent. I mean, if you find yourself in a position of responsibility or role model, um, you're, you're watched. You're watched all the time. And, and it's less about the presentations you do or the, the speeches you do. It's, it's how you behave. And so, yeah. uh, I mean, for, for me, I had to start with my, you know, it was less tiring for myself to be more um, vulnerable, if you will. Yeah. Um, but I also wanted other people to be better and if it was less tiring for me and, and more authentic then it would be for everyone else and so mm. you start doing that bit by bit and you realize that there's really not a lot to lose uh, in in bringing your true self to situations and, and, and being that little bit more natural and you're right it, it it is about removing stuff you know you don't add vulnerability mm. that that's already there it's about just picking away. We talk about my uh, my, my battle with masks, and uh, yeah, yeah. people have to listen to the podcast to, to, to understand. Exactly, yeah, yeah. And yeah. it's not it's not the uh, it's not the kind of mask that you might think of in uh, in these COVID times. No, either. exactly. Yeah, we're, <laughs> we're on trend, but uh, we're also on trend by you know kind of minimalism and, and removing things and just finding what what's left is valuable. And yeah. I don't. Um, I don't succeed every day at, at this at, by any means. There are um, anxieties and, and over preps on certain things. But uh, for, for, a, for someone who wants to work out how do I do this, I do think our, uh, the, the podcast that you kindly invited to me to d- does unpack some of the things that I, as a middle-aged white guy, decided to have a cracker. And, and I'm glad personally for doing it. And that's enough for me. Yeah, yeah. I think this idea of of being your whole self at work and bringing your whole self to work and the idea of the how tiring it is to not be yourself, to constantly wear those masks and to try and be someone else to fit in at work. Uh, I always talk about fit, but I mean it in the very concept that you don't it's being authentic, but still fitting in. So you don't want to work somewhere where you have to mold yourself to fit in with the culture there, that it's perfectly okay to be yourself, to be who you are. Um, But it's, yeah, it can be exhausting. And exactly as you say, so if you are that way yourself, you give permission to other people to be that way. And the fewer decisions or the fewer, the, the less effort that we exert in trying to be someone else the more productive we are the more energy we have to bring to work because we're not pretending to be someone else the entire time yeah and it's having the confidence and trust that you'll find your place so i, I really believe in fitting in i think mm-hmm. uh, i remember listening to a podcast myself where i said the first three roles of a, a new job is fit in fit in fit in and i i believe in that um, because you're part of a community, part of a tribe that you're joining, and there are cultures to mm. work, work out. Equally, if you are going to be part of that tribe and that culture and that company, then you've got to be yourself. Otherwise, you'll be fabricating something each day. And if it's not the case, then that's okay too. Um, I think we, we touch upon your communities will tell you if it's not your community, or, you know, yeah. you'll get found out or you'll find it out for yourself. Mm. And uh, that's another part. And I think that's changed in the workplace a little bit more, you know, gone are the days where you rock up and you punch your card and you all sit down at the same time. Those days are gone. And so yeah. companies, companies get value. There's commercial value in individuals turning up as themselves and bringing their idiosyncrasies to, to work. And, and that's vulnerability. Yeah, absolutely. Any any more thoughts to share on the podcast itself or why people might want to, to tune in? We've already got some really great feedback, both on your post and on my post earlier in the week as well. So I um, really appreciate people reaching out to say that it resonated with them. Well, I think anyone who's kind of working out, OK, where do I start? It's a good place to start. You know, my experience, I, I, I don't claim to to be an expert but it's a place to start to understand whether that can help uh, an individual but also any individual working out whether they're getting it right or wrong uh, is a good place to start because I do talk about my journey and I talk about how I've tripped up and and come through and tripped up and keep tripping up I think I talk about being full of contradictions 
Um, it is a topic that is learned by by just doing. Yeah. So I, I think in a lot of topics like vulnerability, authenticity, um, getting as much exposure and as much information as you can is a really, really good place to start. Yeah. And I would say anyone who's in a leadership position, I think you have a lot of responsibility to do this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a really great point, actually. And um, I, I came away after the discussion, actually, and I was thinking of this idea of contradictions. And, you know, I'd love to know if people want to put in the comments what they think. But I certainly was like, yeah, I feel like I'm full of contradictions as well. On the one hand, you might think this or say this, but on the other, behave in, in, in a slightly different way or something like I think maybe having contradictions is what makes is part of what makes us human and probably what part of what makes us vulnerable then that we might say one thing but we don't always act in that way and therefore you know if people call us out on it then it's like okay yeah you know I'm I'm human as well you know I'm not mm -hmm. a I'm not a robot <laughs> yeah and I also I mean I'd love to hear from people who who don't agree that it's a leader's responsibility to to be vulnerable I mean, I'm sure there are people who listen to us now and say, ah, you know, it's soft or uh, it's just what, you know, it, it's, it's, it's Paul being trying to be woke or trying to tap into it. I, I'd like to hear that because um, I think those people might be surprised about what their teams are saying about them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that is, it's a buzzword at the moment. It's really trendy. So let's all get involved. And it's, like for me, it's an evolution and it's therefore it's here to stay and it might change and evolve over time, but actually it's really, really important. And we we do on the podcast touch on the difference between, you know, sharing your entire self and all of your personal details and, and how to set clear boundaries around that, because it's not about sharing every part of yourself. You know, it, it is about sharing the, the more human side at work. Um, interestingly what you're saying about leaders and sometimes leaders are thinking no it's not my responsibility but I would like the team to be like that or, or to do that and um, the the podcast that's coming out on Friday of this week is with the, a, a guy called Dan Norenberg and he has this great book called Executive Ownership and in it he describes various different stories but you know when he initially works with these executive teams the leader of that team is often kind of like, yeah, yeah, no, this is what I want my team to do. And it's like, no, 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 <laughs> you got to do that. You got to be part of the process too. You can't just delegate these changes to the rest of the team. It's not like everyone else has to change. And uh, right. I don't, it's no, we're all on this journey together and we all have to change. You know, it's, it, it, I saw a great meme a few years ago as well. And it was like, who wants change? Everyone puts their hand up. Who wants to change? And nobody puts their hand up. So, you know. Yeah, I, I have a line that if you want something to change, you start with um, um, concentric circles from your own desk. I stole it from somewhere, but it all starts there and yeah. moves out. I kind of wish I had a book to sell or something, but I don't. So, uh, <laughs> not yet, Paul. Not yet. <laughs> if anyone thinks that it's just trendy and and uh, I'm tapping into a seam, then yeah, the, the anxieties I I've gone through in order to get to this place where I'm a bit better um, didn't feel trendy at the time. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Brilliant. Thank you so much for your time today on the live, and again for your time on the podcast. This is a different link or a different kind of um I don't know how to describe the word but the scheduled uh the schedule poster the schedule live has a link to the full podcast this one doesn't yet uh, because I'm still live at the moment having had to very quickly reschedule it but I will put a link to the full podcast below this so if you're listening up I'll, I'll I'll put a, a link below and I'd love to get your thoughts and comments in that on anything that we discussed today or anything from the full podcast um, so thank you. Thank you so much for tuning in today, either to the live or to the replay. And let me know what you think. Thanks.